Hello guys, hope you have been having a lovely day. In this video, we will be learning about the input and output modules of a PLC system. So, for any system which includes the PLC system, we need an input and output, at least one input and an output. So, a normal data processing computer, a normal data processing computer that we people use say for example excel um powerpoint and for applications like that which which are called data processing computers we need inputs like keyboard inputs we need a data input and we get the output on a specific monitor or uh, any output device that is going to display the process that has been completed However, PLCs, which are essentially process control computers, the inputs are usually input from various sensors like heat sensor, humidity sensor, etc. And the output is usually a motor, a solenoid, etc. So a PLC which is a process control computer has a different approach than a data control computer or a data processing computer which is our general conventional computer. So now let us look at the input modules of a PLC. So a PLC essentially has four stages of input. The first stage is it it detects an input the first stage is it detects an input and the second stage it determines what the input is that is it processes the input that is is the signal high or or is this sensor low and things like that now here the third and fourth stages are conversion and isolation we will talk about this in detail and the fourth stage is the output block so to start with the detection of an input you will understand this better by this small circuit diagram so this is the circuit diagram of the input module of a PLC. On the extreme left, what you're seeing is, is a switch. When the switch is turned on, you get a supply of 120 volts, 60 hertz, or as in some countries like um, US where you have 120, 60, in India you have uh, 240, 50 hertz and yeah that depends on your supply so once the supply comes from the input end what you can see here is a converter this is your converter block as we know a plc can work on voltages of plus or minus 5 volts dc supply so we definitely need a step down voltage we definitely need a voltage that has to be stepped down by by a lot of uh, amount we need because at the output at the cpu uh, we need only plus or minus 5 volts now you have a converter here that will convert the voltage into your specific voltage and make the ac into a pulsating dc and later the pulsating dc is converted into a pure uh, continuous DC which is actually required for your PLC programmer and what you are seeing next here is an optical isolator or an opto isolator what an opto isolator does is it converts the electrical signals it receives here it converts the electrical signals received here into light signals the major advantage of this is that if your el electrical signals um, directly go into the CPU, it might cause any damage. 
to avoid that what this optical isolator or opto isolator does is it converts these electrical signals into light signals so these light signals they are uh, these signals whether they are on or off they are carried by using a light beam so this light beam is produced by an led or a light emitting diode which i'm sure you guys know and now when uh, after the conversion here this is gone as dc voltage into the cpu so this the output of the input module is to the cpu right and the input for the output module will be from the cpu right so the input this is all about the input module of a plc system so this is very simple it has a supply it has a converter which converts the ac to dc into the required dc and then the optical isolator or the opto isolator which converts this into light signals and then from here these light signals into dc which finally go into the cpu so now that we are done with the input module let us have a look at the output module so as you guys have might have guessed by now the output module works in the exact opposite way of uh, the input module so what did we have in the end of the input module we had the optical isolator right we had the output logic and before that we had the we had the cpu's input which is your output logic so now here i get input from the cpu input is from the cpu and this is converted by using an optical isolator into your dc so this is my opto isolator right and then uh, as i have mentioned in the beginning of the video what are the output devices that are usually driven by a plc module we have talked about motors we have talked about um, solenoids and other things so to control these motors we use uh, some solid state devices so we use many other devices we use mainly three kinds of devices i'll show you what the first one is a triac the output of the triac is given to the load so this is how and uh, i'm going to give a trigger control to the triac from here right and uh, yeah that's very much it so this is your converter this is your trigger for the triac and the load is connected there is connected after this so the load can be a motor and this output supply is 120 voltage ac which is which is the usual if it is 240 then it's 240 if it's 120 it's 120 etc so instead of a triac you could use a dc to dc converter or you can use another uh, converter that again converts this output dc into the required ac so you can use different methods of control but the major point to note here is the input is from the cpu and after it comes from the cpu it is again optically isolated and once that is done the triggering is given into a triac or any converter and that converter controls your load which is your motor whether it is turning on or turning off that that is very much the thing now another point to note about this uh, input and output modules is we have seen two circuit diagrams for input and output logics for input logics it was from the 120 voltage ac then optical isolator here and then we had the output there but uh, and this was to cpu 
and for the output module it was from CPU and to the output device right now what I would like to tell you is in any PLC system not a single it, it, it never a single terminal is used for example what the circuit diagram we saw was just a single terminal usually for input modules we have 4 6 8 12 16 32 terminals which means in addition to this we also have ground terminals which means you can have 8 opto isolators like this 8 converters like this 8 um, output logics connected to the CPU like this so 4, 6, 8, 12, 16 and 32 those are the terminals that are possible for the input modules and for the output modules it is very much the same so this is how the input and output modules of a PLC uh, system work hope you have found this interesting thank you for watching and have a lovely day if you have an exam tomorrow all the very very best